So we come to that time of year where the pellet wagger really comes into its own. But this time of year, it's not all about spraying loads of pellets in and feeding lots to catch big weights of fish. It's a bit more stealthy than that. So I'm going to show you how to use these to catch plenty of fish in a slightly stealthier manner. So here today, obviously fishing the pellet waggler, but it's slightly different. We come into spring, the weather's absolutely freezing and the fish are not really coming to them six mil and eight mil pellets that we sort of normally use on a waggler. So what we're actually doing is chucking the waggler up to cover. So far bank or a feature in your peg, which the fish are actually gonna be there. Obviously by chucking that nice little waggler, a nice sort of stealth method, it's gonna flutter in front of them and they're gonna have it. It's very much like mugging on the pole, but obviously you can't see the fish, but it's a similar sort of situation. So we're chucking nice little light wagglers like we've got in hand today, six mil pellet, eight mil pellet on the hook or bunches of dead maggots, anything really like that. It catches these carp out that necessarily, don't necessarily want to feed. So that's how we're gonna to fish today. What we're gonna do is now show you the tackle you need to fish this method nice and effectively. So getting your tackle right for pellet waggler fishing is so, so important. If you have the wrong tackle, it's gonna make life harder, make the fishing harder and less enjoyable as well. So first of all, we're gonna start off with the rod. It's actually a Guru 11 foot Aventus pellet waggler rod. Lovely rod, the main thing is it's a nice crisp action. So it's got a bit of sort of pokiness about it. You can punch them floats, but it's also nice and soft. So when you're playing the fish, you're not gonna get any hook pulls. Coming on to the actual reel line. Now this is probably the most important thing when you, you pellet waggler fishing. You want a nice low diameter line, which enables you to cast the waggler nice and easy and not also too much drag or resistance. Gone for a five pound detection line. Now, if I was fishing in open water, I'd probably go for four pound, but because I'm fishing up to some features today, it might be an odd like bramble or something like that hanging in the water. So I'm just gonna go a bit heavier. I'm just gonna go to five pound detection, nice low stretch, nice strong line, nice and durable, perfect for pellet waggler fishing. So coming on to the waggler choice, there's two different types of waggler I like to use. I would like to use a balsa waggler or a foam waggler. Now you're probably wondering, well, why would you use both when you're going to use one over the other? Now I'll just explain that. So in a perfect scenario, no wind, nice presentation, nice flat calm day, I go for the foam waggler. Reason being, it's a bit more sort of subtle when it hits the water, makes a better noise and really it's better for fishing in my opinion. However, the weather's not always great. If you get a bit of a crosswind, a bit of a toe on the lake, something like that, then I'll go for a balsa waggler. Normally in six to eight grams is a nice size. It's a bit denser. It sits, just sits a bit better in the wind. And obviously if your float's moving through, you're not gonna get bites. So having them two different choices, you're gonna find a waggler that's suitable on the day. Now coming from a main line, I've actually got, it's basically about two foot of eight pound detection line. And I've actually attached that loop to loop. It's almost like a little shock leader, but there's a reason I use it. Now, obviously when we're fishing pellet wagglers, we use float stops. So I've just got the same sort of traditional way of attaching it. I've got a float stop and then three below and a link swivel. Now, if you use this on a, a line, it's too thin, you can actually find you'll cast and the, the float stops move. Whereas actually having this bit of thicker line, this eight pound line, because it's a bit thicker, then float stops don't move as quite as good. And I've been fishing today, I've had no sort of slippages when I've been casting, it's been absolutely brilliant. And also a great thing with having this bit of eight pound is, when you're moving them stops, it's not gonna damage your line. So if you're using really thin line, you keep sliding them all, all day, the chances are eventually it might break when you catch a lot of fish. I just, then another reason as well, I have this two foot and it allows me to make, obviously, ultimate depth two foot. And obviously, if I wanna make me go deeper, I'll put a longer hook link on. I'm gonna go shorter, I'll put a shorter hook link on. So nice and simple. Then coming down onto the hook link material, we've just got 020 hook link. No, it's something nice and strong. We're fishing for a decent sized carp today. I don't wanna to go too light. Coming on to the hook choice, got a 16 MWG hook and a bait, herring bait band, standard stuff. So that's the setup for pellet waggler fishing. Nice and simple, but it's got to be correct to make your day easy. Now let's go and catch some fish. Right, so enough of the talking, let's do some fishing. So like I said, we're gonna be chucking up to a feature today. And I know where I'm chucking is probably three to four foot. So I'm gonna start about two foot deep. I think it's gonna be a nice start in depth. If they miss a few bites, the boys can come shallower, 
for not getting bites, it's going to go deeper, nice and simple. Hook bait wise, I'm actually going to start off on some maggots today because it's really cold, so I'm just going to start off with four red maggots and just see how it goes, you know. If that's not working, I'm going to try my hard pellets. I've got, I've obviously got a selection of hard pellets. I've got some light coloured ones which sink a bit slower. I've also got like your 8 mil standard coppings which sink a bit faster. And to start with, I'm not actually going to feed anything. I'm just going to chuck it out, probably give it half an hour, just chuck in and just see what sort of response I get. If I'm catching, great, I'll stick at it. But then we'll also think about feeding if I have to. But like I say, if you can get away without feeding, it's normally better because it means obviously you've only got your hook bait there and you're more likely to catch the fish. So we'll get four maggots on the hook. And then when you're hooking the maggots as well, it's really important to hook them through the, the pointy bit because obviously you don't want them wrapping over your hook, so it's really important to hook them through the, uh, the pointy bit. So I'm going to start off on four maggots. And actually, the hook choice for maggots is actually a bit different. Obviously, with a hard pellet, like an MWG hook, but for my maggots, I'm just going to straight hook them. So I've just got a size Guru 12 pellet waggler, nice wide gape hook, so when I'm fishing maggots, it's going to be nice. But when I, if I swap to banded pellet, I just simply put a 16 SMWG with a bait band, and exactly the same, same kit wise, well, like I said in the video. Right. So what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to chuck tight to that cover. Like that. And obviously you're probably thinking to yourself, how am I going to chuck close to the cover consistently? Now, I'm actually going to use, a, I'm using a line clip today. So obviously I'm not going to, if I was fishing in open water, I wouldn't use a line clip for pellet waggler fishing. But because I'm fishing up to cover, they can't run the other way anyway. So it means I can use a clip. And also if I didn't, I'd just end up being in the bushes or nowhere near it, like most people would, to be honest. I'm going to chuck it again, hopefully I'm going to chuck it a bit tighter this time, because that was my first chuck. Like that. You see, is well my hook bait, it's just landing right next to the feature. And all I'm going to do is, I'm going to leave it for about a minute to start with, and it's almost like dobbing, a bit like how you dob in the winter, so you dobbing bread, dobbing maggots, similar sort of approach. There's be fish around the cover, and you're just basically trying to target them with that single hook bait, and then fish it and not really wanting to eat much bait, hopefully it's going to pick them off. But like I said, I've started about two foot deep, which I think is a nice starting point. And if I'm not catching, I'll just go deeper, simple as that. If he's missing a few bites or if I look anything, I'll come shallower. And that's the best, basically the best way to start. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to be, give it about a minute for each cast and see how we'll get on. I mean, as you can see as well, the wind's pushing towards me, so I can't actually leave it too long because it's pushing it away from the cover. Now, if I left it for too long, it it just bring it into open water and then fish are going to be right against that bank so that's something to bear in mind. Let's chuck it nice and tight again. And as you can see today that's actually an eight gram bolster top waggler. Now in an ideal world I would like to use the lightest waggler I could get away with but the wind's just not allowing that today. As it probably doesn't look too windy on the camera but I've actually got a wind in the face so chucking a light little like flow it's just not possible um, sort of looked like a bit of an indication to me but another, another thing to also bear in mind is don't just chuck it in one place now as you can see on that far bank we've got loads of little bits where we can chuck it into and the best thing to do is just keep chucking it around because the fish not necessarily in one place they might be sort of bowled up in one place so you've got to, you've got to keep moving around and also you might catch a few in one spot and then you might have to move that's a nice cast. But as you can imagine, obviously, if we're fishing a feeder over there, for example, obviously, we're putting quite a bit of bait in. And if them fish are not feeding, they won't want it, because obviously the temperature's cold still. There's a few fish willing to have a go, but it's cold still, and they don't necessarily want a lot of bait. So just by casting that bait to where they want to be, hopefully they'll just feel a bit more confident and willing to feed. So another thing as well, you probably can see the wag. If the if the waggler's dragging slightly to the left of the cover, I'm not too, I'm not too bothered about that because I still feel I could catch a fish. It's more if that waggler comes off the cover, say a meter off the bank or two meters, sort of in no man's land. So that is when time is to recast. So you can see now, if you can see the waggler, that's sort of pushed probably a couple of meters off the far bank. So there's no point leaving that in because 
you're not where the fish are going to be. Now, the reason I like to go for a waggler is it's a bit more sort of stealthy. So obviously, if you're chucking a bomb or a feeder, it makes a bit more noise, but also you can't work the rig in the same way. So obviously, when you're fishing a bomb, you're fishing with a single hook bait there and you're not getting the hook bait full through. And obviously, if you're chucking a feeder, you've got to put bait in your feeder, really. So then fish are not really want, willing to feed too much. You might put them fish off or spook them. So by having a waggler, it's basically the best, closest thing to fishing with a pole. You can have your bait falling through the water and hopefully enticing the fish into, into feeding. So obviously, they hear the splash of that waggler, they'll turn, they'll look for the bait, and obviously, you've got your hook, single hook bait falling through, and then obviously, you're going to nail the fish. So obviously, if you're sort of feeding, fishing a bomb and pellet, for example, firing pellets in, fishing with yours on the hook, the chances are if them fish don't really want to feed, you're going to have less chance of catching the fish because there's obviously more options for them to go for. As you're doing this, this is your hook bait there, and you, you're not going to sort of ruin your peg before you start. And it's obviously, it's been a method, especially here at the Glebe, where it's, it's produced massive weights because when them carp are sort of, they will have a go, but they don't really want a volume of bait. They'll have a go, and there you go, we've, we've caught one straight away. And we've literally not fed a thing. We've literally just cast to where them fish are happy and we've caught one straight away. But like I say, the main thing is, is getting to where them fish want to be. So if we were just chucking it in the open water today, there's no feature there to hold the fish. Whereas where we're casting, there's loads of little hidey holes for the fish to be in and they feel comfortable there. So it's all about fishing to where the fish actually want to be. As you can see, this, this rod, it's absolutely lovely. And what I was talking about, the actual action of the rod, is it's stiff enough to cast the waggler out, but when you hook a fish, it just, it's, it's really nice and soft and it bends, so you're not going to get hook pulls. It's a really, really nice rod, this is. I'll say, just take your time with the fish. No different to when you're fishing a bomber or a feed or anything, make every fish count. But this is really is the beauty of this, this method. You're not going to ruin your peg before you start it. You're not going to do any harm. You're not feeding any bait. And some days it can, you can have absolutely massive weights. Because like I say, there the fish are already there. You're putting your hook bait in without any other food there and they're going to go into your bait first. Looks like a nice ghost carp. Let's bring the fish low, rod up, and there we go. First fish in the net, nice ghost carp. Probably sort of four pound. And you can't beat with that float going under. Obviously, the bomb and the feed is a great method, but seeing that float go under, I think personally is a lot more enjoyable than a, than a feeder. So that's the first one in the net. Right, so as you can probably see, on the cameras, the wind's actually got stronger and I had to change my float. So I started off on a six gram bolsa waggler, but I've had to put an eight gram on now. Now the reason for this is obviously, like I said, the wind's got up and I'm not I was not reaching my target so easy with a six gram waggler, but I was also having a, a slack line. So what I mean by that is from my rod tip to the float, there's a big bow. So it means if I get a bite, I've got to pick all the slack up and the chances are I'm going to miss the bite. The trick is getting the, the right waggler is to have a nice straight line when the waggler hits the water from your rod tip to your waggler. That means when you get a bite, you're in, you're in direct contact to your waggler and you're going to hit every bite. But also, talking about waggler choice, as you, see, you can see, I've got a bolsa waggler on and that's because of the wind today. Now, in an ideal world, like I said before, I'd ideally go for foam wagglers. But obviously in this wind, when, it, when that foam waggler hits the water, it catches the wind, it's moving through too fast and also making casting hard. So. The bolsa waggler is the right one for the job today and as you can see it's going in nice and it's just sitting better and that's why it's important to have two different types of waggler choices and like I said I prefer a foam waggler but sometimes a bolsa is just the one and in conditions like this it's just more stable. Another thing as well which I'll go through now is actually casting the waggler. Now it's a bit different to a bomb and a feeder, casting these light floats it needs a bit more of a different technique. So I'm going to run through that now. So the best way to do, I think personally, is sort of have about, with an 11 foot rod, about three foot of line like that. And it gives you enough to sort of whip the waggler and cast it in one motion. So what I do is swing it out, bring it round my head, all in one motion, punch it, and then feather. So it's hit the clip. Obviously if I won't use the clip, I use my finger and it's feathered it. And I get a nice tight line from my rod tip to my waggler. And there we go, we've caught one. And like I say, if we had a lighter waggler, what would happen is, if I, hit, if I hit the clip then and there's a big 
big bow in your line, you'd have got that bite, and because you're not in direct contact, you'd miss the bite. So it's really, really important to have a, a straight line between your rod tip and your float. And that's the secret of knowing when you've got the right float. So that's probably one of the most important things about waggler fishing. And hopefully we'll get this fish in. Like I say, just take your time. Like that, make every fish count. It's going off to the right. Like I say, it's the most in, one of the most enjoyable methods you can sort of do, I personally think, in fishing, watching that float going under. Like I say, it keeps you busy, you're always working at it, and it's a bit more exciting than fishing a bomb, for example. It's, it's a really enjoyable method. So we'll get this fish in a nice carp. Not like that. There's another nice carp on the waggler. We're having a great day here. Slip the hook out and hopefully we'll catch a few more. Right, so there's another one. Now, probably going to call this last last fish of the day now. I've had a, a brilliant day here at the Glebe. Caught loads of fish up to that cover. And like I say, it just goes for how much of a good method this actually is. Especially in these sort of colder sort of spring days you get when the fish are not really wanting to eat a lot of bait. Again, just take your time. But yeah, it's been a really good day. Obviously, just been chucking to that far bank. We'll see, get, like I've been saying, getting your Wagner choice right. From Going from the six grams to the eight grams, been apps, it's been really, really important just to get that presentation. And like I say, we've, we've caught best on three or four red maggots down the hook. But like I say, a hard pellet on its day is absolutely brilliant bait as well. It's all about just bringing the changes to you catch the fish. And there's a, another nice glebe carp. But you really can't be watching that Wagner go under when it goes. It's, it's a, in my opinion, it's a more more enjoyable method than fishing the feeder and the bomb. And like I say, even if you're just pleasure fishing for a few hours, there's, there's not a better, better method for excitement. So we'll just get this one in. Just take your time. A bit of bad netting, but we'll get there. As you can see, the, the fish are woke up, but the weather is still chilly. So just get about getting that balance right with the feed. There we go. It's a nice fish to end the session on. We've had loads of these today. I'll we'll just get the hook out and show you it. So there you go. There's another beautiful carp caught on the waggler here today at the Glebe. If you've got a local fishery near you, got some features to chuck to, or a far bank, go give this method a try and you'll catch plenty of these. <laughs>